Good afternoon. We are glad to see you here. We are glad that you have taken um, a little bit of time out of your day today to join us. This is our sixth session of letter support for pre-K leaders, and we are excited to continue this series where we discuss literacy development and how it relates to three, four, and five-year-olds in the state of North Carolina. So as a reminder, each month we host two opportunities for you to join these conversations with us, um, and the sessions that occur within the same month cover the same content. To introduce myself, my name is Sarah Morrison. I am one of the early education consultants in the Office of Early Learning out of the Southwest region and I have my fantastic colleague with me today Jenny Wilkinson who is one of the early education consultants um, in the north central region and so we are really excited to be with you today so this quote we love this quote we always like to include this in our um, in our work that we do this is stated on page one of letters for early childhood educators and it just reminds us that early literacy encompasses foundational skills that are learned from birth to five or six years of age. Early reading and writing encompasses those skills that happen in kindergarten and the early elementary grades. So there's a difference between early literacy and early reading and writing, and we really um, appreciate and think that distinction is worth highlighting. So now on to our talking points for today. We are gonna be talking about writing um, in the preschool classroom. So we're gonna discuss a little bit of the rationale and the research, some phases of writing development, um, a little bit of information around becoming young writers and handwriting and letter formation. So to focus our attention and to help us um, get our minds ready to talk about today's topic on writing, we're gonna start with the welcoming inclusion activity. So we would like for you to fill in the blanks to this um, statement and write your thoughts in the chat box. So teaching writing is blank because blank. Thank you, Susanna, there we go. Teaching writing is challenging because kids are in different levels of knowing letters and sounds, yes. Very, very true. Excellent, um, excellent statement. Excellent. I'm trying to figure out how do we handle all of that <laughs> and adapt so that they can grow. Teaching writing is essential because working productive adults need that essential skill. Yes, absolutely. We talked a little bit about that. Um, and we'll hit on that just a slight little bit, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And Laura says teaching writing is necessary because it is a lifelong skill. Absolutely. Um, I know sometimes we think that with everything going digital, um, we don't use writing as often as we used to, but gosh, we still do. We want to start with some key theoretical models. If you've joined us before, these will be very familiar. Thank you, Sarah. So, and Sarah's right. We've we've gone over these theoretical models for you before, but they are so important that if we felt the need to to Revisit them every time we join together as a group. So the simple view of reading is a formula that was introduced in 1986 by Goog and Tumner. And this simple view of reading formula demonstrates that reading comprehension is a product of decoding, which is the word recognition and language comprehension, which are separate but necessary skills and weaknesses in either of these areas of decoding or language comprehension is going to reduce the ability to teach um, or to reach the ultimate goal of reading, which is comprehension. And then we have our Scarborough's robe. And if you've gone to some previous sessions, this would look familiar for you. Um, and this Scarborough's robe is like the simple view of reading um, because it breaks down the skills that are necessary as reading uh, during the reading process. And it breaks it down into language comprehension and word recognition skills. And however, each of these two areas is broken down even further into the sub skill strands. So as we jump into our content today, we're gonna to keep these two models in mind um, and the simple view of reading and Scarborough, Scarborough's reading, right? Knowing that writing is a complex skill and it requires a solid foundation in both word recognition and language comprehension. So again, here we have another model, the essential components of literacy instruction. And during our previous sessions within these um, pre-K series, we first addressed Prince rich environments that fostered literacy. And in the following sessions, we've called, covered all of these other components of liter literacy instruction, which is oral language, vocabulary, phonological awareness and phonemic awareness, phonics and fluency. 
And then today we're going to be sharing information and ideas about building writing skills and the use of small group instruction in the pre-K classroom. This connects to our visual here through the orthographic mapping piece, but it's also reliant on all aspects of literacy development. Uh, but today we're excited because we're going to be sharing a new model with you. Um, this is the simple view of writing. And while this model comes from uh, letters volume two for grades K through five, uh, the preschool skills and instructions are aligned. And so we felt the importance to include it here. Now, the primary focus of writing during the preschool year will fall into that foundational writing skills part of the simple view of writing. And um, however, there are also pieces of the composition um, component there that are also being built during the preschool year. And you'll notice here in our little star, we have those skills, those sub skills are demonstrated during modeled, interactive, and shared writing. Brand new model, exciting to share that with you today. We want to share this quote with you today. We want to pause for just a few seconds to read this quote. So if you would take just a moment to read it. And um, this um, quote is going to reserve, serve as a reminder that oral language is the foundation for literacy skills. So let me pause here while you read that quote. Manual for letters. And again, I just want to state again that this quote serves as a reminder to us that that oral language piece is the foundation. Think back to that essential components and that oral language piece, the receptive and expressive language piece is right there in the middle and it touches on everything. And in regard to writing, if children don't first have the words or the vocabulary to orally communicate and think comprehensively, it's going to be very challenging them for, for them to communicate and share their thoughts um, in writing. To have the words and vocabulary needed to write, we must gain them orally first. So those theoretical models, they provide us with um, the visuals built around the research. What we wanna do is spotlight some of the research specific to the development of writing during the early years. So on this slide, who knew, um, as we were developing this, I thought, who knew there were so many different writing options available in preschool? Um, this list includes the types of writing that we were able to find included in current research. And so we're just gonna give you a quick description of each. Procedural writing are the processes and strokes involved in handwriting. Conceptual writing is the understanding that writing carries meaning. Generative writing tr is when children translate their thoughts into writing to convey meaning. Scaffolded writing is when we invite children to share in that writing while conventional um, writing is modeled. Modeled writing is what you might think. It's when the teacher demonstrates writing um, while they think aloud and during the writing process. And that interactive writing is the process where children are invited to participate in the writing so that children are encouraged to use the pen and then contribute their thoughts and ideas. So we wanna share a few additional findings. Um, so children should be provided with multiple opportunities to observe and engage in meaningful writing activities that are integrated throughout the routine and the environment daily. We want writing to happen every day throughout, um, throughout the day. Um, the writing instruction for preschoolers should include experiences that are engaging, intentional, and individualized. We also um, know that name writing has a very different purpose than writing for meaning and that children should receive instruction in both. Writing occurs in developmental phases. We're going to dig into those a little bit today, um, but it's also reciprocal with the developmental phases of early literacy. And teachers need to be familiar with um, and be able to identify which writing level children are performing at in order to plan appropriate instruction that's going to support the child's movement to the next stage um, of development. And so we also want to 
to add here that children's progress with writing is not going to be determined by the provision of materials alone. It is also going to require some interaction, scaffolding, and modeling by the teacher. So having a writing center is not enough. We're going to have to build in those writing activities that help stretch substantially beyond that. Instructional programs that teach both phonological awareness and print knowledge do improve early writing skills. And this connects back to our earlier quote that we had on oral language and its foundational strength. We also know that literacy programs that balance the instruction of reading and writing can improve the performance of both reading and writing. So the key takeaway here is that like most things in early education, there needs to be a balance. And that balance between child-directed and teacher-directed um, instruction and activities is the key. Um, we want to have a balance between content area instruction, math, literacy, SEL, all of those pieces. So we want a balance between reading and writing. So when we consider the implications of the research, that helps to inform our rationale or our why. So what we want you to do is go to that Jamboard link. We'd like you to use that link and we'd like you to think and respond. So what are your thoughts about this research? Why should we have writing in preschool and why should it be more than just a writing center? Uh, while writing preschool and someone responded to provide kids opportunities to develop emergent literacy. Great point. Absolutely. And emergent. I love the word emergent because it mm -hmm. is. They are yeah. not expected to come already knowing how to write or write their exactly. name. I'm going to see some more coming in. What you got? Yeah. So we have kids can practice communication. Um, and someone else put it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert in any area. The more opportunities we give children to write and then intentionally help them link that writing to learning, the better. Definitely. Definitely. And that speaks to having patience, right? As children are trying to develop all of these skills, they don't happen quickly. And it's easy for us as adults, I think, sometimes to go, we just talked about that. <laughs> yeah, how did you not get it? Um, and so I appreciate that perspective that it takes a while for these things to develop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we came up with a rationale as well. We wanted to share it with you. We kind of thought, what would be our why? And so we came up with um, to ensure that all children can engage and communicate in the fullness of their culture and society. The ability to write using language must be nurtured from birth and connected to children's physical, cognitive, and social development. And this goes back to some of those things that you all mentioned earlier in the chat. You know, um, we have to be able as adults to have this skill to be able to function. Um, it's a lifelong skill. And so um, that's, these are all great points for our rationale for why writing matters. It's a very key piece of literacy development. We're gonna now start diving into the phases of writing development. And um, this is where our research comes in as Sarah was sharing some of the research findings earlier, um, but we're gonna talk about the phases of writing development and research shows that reading and writing are closely related and aligned. And, and that means really that reading and writing depend on many of the same skills. Think about back to our models. They depend on many of the same skills, the strategies and the knowledge. And writing requires a combination of these skills and these skills include language, motor planning, and executive functioning skills. Children need to have an understanding of print and they need to be developing letter knowledge and phonemic awareness. The motor skills needed include visual motor integration, a sense of how writing feels, and knowing how to hold writing tools. Executive functioning skills include, include restraining, um, working memory, goal setting and planning, and ever-present self-regulation. And so writing clearly is the most complex linguistic process. And as we move into our discussion on the phases of writing development, we did want to mention an important note here. Um, as Sarah and I were preparing, preparing today, we realized that a review of the literature and research on writing, um, that there is not a common set of terminology to identify and define those early writing phases. While there seems to be general consensus on how writing develops and the descriptive terms 
are not identical depending on the researcher. So for the purpose of, of today's webinar and in alignment with the state implementation, we're, we're going to use the phases that are described in letters and letters for early childhood. We're going to really focus on phase one and phase two. And as children gain an understanding of how print works, they progress through well-defined literacy and writing phases. And as teachers, it's important for us to understand that these phases are distributed along a continuum. They're not developed separately as the phases begin with simple understandings and they progress to more conventional reading and spelling. Also, it's important to note that a child's develop writing development parallels the child's development as a reader. So just as, as with reading skills, writing skills go through intentionally planned, uh, explicitly taught instruction. And children need many, many opportunities to write and receive um, that directive feedback through each phase of writing development. So we're gonna begin with the earliest phase of writing, and this is the pre-alphabetic phase. This um, beginning stage of writing begins with no understanding of letter speech, correspondence and is characterized by three unique levels and occurs between the ages of two and five years old. Our second phase of writing development is the early alphabetic phase. And this is where children are gaining awareness of a better understanding of speech sounds and corresponding letters. They're beginning to understand alphabet knowledge and phonemic awareness. And this phase occurs during late preschool to kindergarten. Our third phase is when children are building their alphabetic knowledge and they enter into the later alphabetic phase or the phonetic phase. Children at this stage have developed a complete letter name and letter sound knowledge, and they have a well-developed phonemic awareness. This phase develops between kindergarten and second grade. Our last phase is the conventional phase. Now, this is where children are using their phonetic knowledge to spell words orthographically and grammatically correct. And this occurs between, um, during third grade and beyond. And because the first two phases are the focus of early childhood years, we're going to spend a little bit more time with the pre-alphabetic and the semi-alphabetic, excuse me, semi-phonetic stages of writing. The characteristic for the pre-alphabetic phase of writing for of both literacy and writing is that it happens before children understand alphabetic use, before they understand the alphabet. As we mentioned earlier, children ages two to five are developing their letter knowledge, but they don't yet really understand the correspondences between letter and sound. In literacy, they recognize print by the way it looks. For example, our child here, Michael, may state the McDonald's sign is his name because he might recognize that shape of that letter there, the M in McDonald's. Once children understand that there is a difference between drawing and writing, they transition to a phase called scribbles, and it's characterized by horizontal wavy lines, often with a left to right orientation. Preschoolers who pretend to write are showing that print has meaning, and scribbles may not make any sense to an adult. They look like a lot of lines and loops and squiggles, but these marks are very important to young children. They are that child's way of writing their thoughts. But again, there is no connection between the sounds and letters in their writing. They have learned that what we can say, that we can say something and write it down, and then others can read what we've written. So if you ask a child to tell about their writing, write down what they say on the back of the paper and read them what they've said to you. A child's attempt at writing may seem like scribbling, but the truth is pretend writing or what we term scribbles is an essential and important step in learning to write. When you notice that your students are beginning to scribble, it means that your students are learning that print has meaning. This means that they are on the road to becoming writers. Children then progress to the second phase of writing, and this is mock letters. We notice that mock letters are individual squiggles or writing that appears to be symbol-like. Often a child's first letters are drawn by accident and then identified by the child or a parent or um, a caregiver or a teacher. 
expected that this age will form letters to represent written language for meaningful words at certain phase, phrases, I'm sorry, or certain phrases, such as I love you or I see. Preschoolers who see older children or adults write begin to see that writing has a purpose and they want to try it. At this phase, children have had exposure to some letters and they're attempting to use them. It is most common to see children experiment with letters in their names because these are the letters that they know the most. They also make mock letters using familiar shapes, assuming that their mock letter must be a real letter because it uses the same shapes. They don't yet understand that specific sounds go with each letter. And now that they have a better grasp of the shapes used to make letters, they use these primarily. So research by Horst, Woodward, and Burke has shown that children's scribbles and emergent writing take on the characteristics of printed language in their own culture. This is interesting. Scribble writing in Arabic and Hebrew, for example, looks different from scribbles in English. Moving on to our third level or phase of writing, this is our pre-alphabetic phase. And by the end of the scribble level of the pre-alphabetic phase, children's oral language, letter knowledge, cognition, and fine motor skills have developed to support a better understanding that print is represented by letters. Children have now progressed to the random letter strings level of the pre-alphabetic phase of writing. These letter-like formations may resemble letters, but it isn't really intentional. While children may not know all the letters of the alphabet, they are beginning to realize that by stringing them together, they can convey a message. These random strings of letters are written without any letter sound correspondences to the sounds and the words children are writing. The child writes long strings of various letters in random order, and they may go from left to right, uh, they may use some letter sequence, perhaps, from their own name, and usually we do see capital letters in this phase. They may write the same letter in many different ways, though, too. Their strings of letters may, be in, may even be interspersed with numbers, random shapes, and spacing is rarely present. The second phase of the pre-alphabetic phase of writing, or the second level, is what we call the semi-phonetic phase of writing, and it's true to its name. Children in pre-K into kindergarten are often at this phase of literacy and writing develop, obtaining their first concrete exposure to phonetic learning during this time. Children begin to understand letter sound correspondence, that sounds are assigned to letters and they attempt to use them to label their drawings or to convey their message. Children begin to notice that words are grouped together and not a single string and, and not a single string, although those letters won't actually spell words yet. Writing during the semi-phonetic phase may have one letter that represents an entire word or a syllable and may still include random, random letters and letter strings. During the semi-phonetic stage, children often employ rudimentary logic. They might write letters that represent some or most obvious or perceivable sounds in the words they're writing. They typically write the initial or final phonemes, and they often ignore the vowel sounds because they're less phonetically predictable as consonant sounds. And we see that in our example here with the word love is spelled L-V, and the word U spelled with the single letter U. We also see that this child is still incorporating letter strings. This phase is often referred to as invented, as invented spelling, and it is the child's best attempt at spelling a word. So, for example, if they're trying to spell is, I-S, they may sound it out and spell it I-Z. This stage allows children to develop a deeper understanding of phonetics and how to spell words correctly. Now, it's essential to provide them the support and the encouragement they need to improve this skill. Invented spelling or semi-phonetic writing is developmentally appropriate for the preschool ages. However, there is nothing wrong with guiding them into sounding out words, spelling, and writing as they progress to the next phase of writing development. Let's start next talking about becoming young writers. It's really important to know that, that children begin to learn about reading and writing by observing the world around them. Over time, they begin to understand that words have meaning and writing conveys message. 
So therefore, it's imperative that we as caregivers and teachers model writing in front of children, as well as providing those ample opportunities for them to practice their writing. We'd like to cite um, some information from the NAEYC publication of Young Children. This was in a publication in 2017. And I'm gonna pause here and give you a moment to read through this information. And then we'll spend just a moment talking about it. If you had a chance to read through all of that. Um, and from the research findings that, share, uh, that Sarah shared with you earlier, we know that young children need time, a lot of time to engage in multiple meaningful opportunities for writing. Teachers who intentionally provide young children with a variety of early writing experiences and support and, inc and encourage their writing development through the continuum of the phases we just spoke about lay that foundation for kindergarten ready. So just a question to reflect upon, are writing opportunities being intentionally planned in your classrooms? And if so, how much time are children actively engaged in writing? So let's spend a few minutes talking about supporting those fine motor developments because we know that writing is a process that begins long before a child forms letters with a pencil or a crayon. It involves building pre-writing skills during preschool, which are necessary for children to be able to master letter formation, correct pencil grip, and pencil control. Pre-writing involves building a set of foundational skills that help children learn to write when they are developmentally ready. Some of these foundational skills that need to be in place before children are ready to start formal writing include well-developed gross motor control, good posture and core control, the ability to cross the midline, a good pencil grasp, well-defined motor control, and the ability to form basic patterns. Simply put, teaching a child to write does not begin with letter formation, but rather by building all the pre-writing skills first. So we're gonna take a few minutes to talk more specifically about supporting fine motor development. Now, the first bullet that we have here says to include a variety of materials throughout the learning environment that require fine motor skills for use. And you're likely familiar with what these types of materials are, but you don't always have to use store vault or catalog materials. You can use cotton balls, buttons, and strings, and those are just to name a few examples. Now, we also know that providing opportunities to build hand strength and grasp is, import is important. Play-Doh is a great way to do this. Using homemade Play-Doh makes it cheaper and lasting longer. That's an option for, um, for you to have. Stress balls, fidget toys, resistant balls, et cetera, can be great for this as well. Containers with lids and playing with sand and water tables is very supportive of building those hand strength and hand grasp. Now, we know that offering activities that support hand-eye coordination is also really important. And here is where there may be some overlap with gross motor skills and self-care opportunities, such as zipping and buttoning and tying and uh, those types of activities. Now, our last bullet says taking advantage of self-care opportunities. So have them try it first. They might ask a friend for help, and then they ask you. Children enjoy exploring writing in many different ways, and as teachers, we need to be reflective and intentional to support the prealphabetic and semi-phonetic phases of writing and children's writing development. So where can we embed these skills in the daily schedule and throughout the classroom environment? Well, we can do, we want to make sure that we are including print concepts, phonological and phonemic awareness, um, alphabet knowledge, those types of things. All right, so supporting young writers. Writing in preschool comes in many forms and there are numerous ways to include writing practice throughout the day. So we know that we need to have children connect dots in drawings, stay between the lines and mazes and trace alphabet letters. We may have children sign in when they arrive at school and or when choosing a center. And we can scaffold that by first arranging letter tiles or they can trace their name. 
We can have children attach a label to their creation and centers. They can support children. We can support children as they match letters to sounds and form letters. We can have children describe their drawings and scribblings to you to help them attach meanings to symbols. We want to make sure that we write their story on the back of the paper. We can have children think aloud as they work through writing a word or a phrase and help them correctly know um, how to use their sounds in their letters to support them as they write that. We can have children create a writing in response to a read aloud. We might ask children to draw and write about their favorite part. Now, another key piece here is having accessible writing materials and tools in every center to encourage and excite our young writers. I'm not going to read this list to you, but um, early childhood classrooms should have a well-stocked writing center that provides a variety of interesting printed materials, writing tools, and things to write on. Our Early Letters Childhood Manuals offers this list on page 132, and it's important to know that print opportunities should be present in every center and every area of the classroom. We're also going to share an article from the um, article that we shared earlier with you, and this has a comprehensive list um, on here of all the different things you can put in each center. Hello everyone, we're going to go over a technique today that you can use with young children by intentionally demonstrating and modeling the developmental phases of writing with them. This technique is called picture story, word story, and this story helps young children feel comfortable writing at their own developmental level. This technique provides scaffolded steps to help them progress from one phase to the next. Always start by writing in a conventional manner like a grown-up to provide that correct model. Make a plan to write just two phases above their level. Remember, you don't need to model the level that they have already achieved. But for de today's demonstration, we're going to model all levels or phases of writing. You can model this strategy with a whole group or with a small group, and it can be used with all types of writing activities. Let's get started. Okay. Boys and girls, we have been reading a lot of stories about pets and animals and all the different kind of animals that people have as pets. Well, you know that I have a dog named Oakley and I'm going to write a story about Oakley. Oakley gets in trouble sometimes um, because she's so big and she gets things off the countertop. So I want to write a story today about how big Oakley is. So I'm gonna write my story here with a drawing. So I'm gonna start right up here and I'm gonna draw my story. Here's a picture of me. I wanna make sure that I'm in this story. And I wanna show Oakley here, but I've gotta make her big because I'm gonna show everyone how big she is. So here's Oakley. Let's give her a nose and a mouth. So I have drawn my story here, all right? Now, this is where I will write what my story is about. Now, I'm gonna write a word story, and since I'm a grown-up, this is how grown-ups write their stories. And I want to say, my dog is big. Let's see, my dog is big. I've got four words that I'm gonna write. My dog is big. My first word is my, I'm gonna put some space here. Dog, some space for my next word is, Space because I'm writing my last word, big. My dog is big. And I'm gonna put a period here, right? Because it comes at the end of our sentence, period. My dog is big. Now, here's another way to write. If you know lots of letters and sounds, you could write your story like this. Can you help me write this story? All right, let's get started. My dog is big. Let's think about the sounds we hear when we say the word my. Yes, you got it. We start with that letter M because I hear the M mm sound. And then you're right, Sammy. I hear the I sound right there. I hear that next sound, my. Now, can you help me with the next word? My dog. That's right. I hear the D sound at the beginning. And what's that last sound that we hear? My dog. You got it. It's the letter G. G represents that G sound. My dog, it. Now, Isabel, I've been waiting for this word. Can you help us with this very beginning sound? My dog is. What's that very first sound? You got it. It's just like that very first sound in your name. 
is. And let's see, Thomas, can you tell me the last sound you hear in the word? I hear that Z sound too. My dog is big. Good, I hear the B and the gussing. Oh, that's right, we're not gonna forget that period. My dog is big, period, good. Now, if you know some of your letters and sounds, you can write your word like this. Can you help me think of the first sound in each word? My, good, dog, our first sound, D, 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 you got it, my dog, my dog is, Isabella, you help us with this one again. You're the expert at that sound. Is, is, right, we're gonna write a capital I. My dog is big. There, we know that beginning sound. And there's that period. My dog is big. Good, good. Now, if you know some of your letters, help me think of some letters that you know. What are some letters that you know? That's another way that we can write our sentence and write our story, is I can write the letters that I know. Hmm. Well, I know the letter S. Yes, what's some other letters that you, oh, you know the letter T? Okay, good, how about you? What letter do you know? You know the letter F? Good. My dog is, and we need one more letter for the word B. Who knows another letter? got it, the word, the letter O, fantastic. And what goes at the very end, our period, my dog is big. We wrote some letters that we knew to tell our story. Very good. Now, if I'm not sure of many letters, if I just know some, but I'm not really sure of the letters that I know, I can just write my story like this. My dog is big. I know that letters have shapes, and so I can write some shapes to help me make my letters. That's right, my dog is big. And what goes at the very end? That's right, a period, you got it. My dog is big. Now, if you don't know any letters and sounds, that's okay, because guess what? You can write your story just like this. My dog is big. It's your period too to write at the end of the sentence. My dog is big. Are you ready to go and write your own stories? Good, let's go. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, that, so that was just an example of picture story and word story technique from Louisa Motes. It's a great way to encourage children and help them build that confidence that they need because we know writing is a difficult, difficult activity. It takes a long time to progress to that. All right, so one of the first words children usually learn to write is their name, their first name. Name writing increases a child's conceptual and procedural knowledge. Names are meaningful to children and they are interested in learning to write the letters in their own names. It's common for children to recognize their name without knowing the in individual letter names. When children are able to write the letters in their name in a fluid manner, they are able to shift from drawing to writing and are also more likely to know the letter names. Having the ability to write their name provides a foundation for other literacy knowledge and skills, such as alphabet knowledge, letter writing, print concepts, and spelling. Letters asserts that instructional components that support effective writing skills include instruction and assessment of own name writing, handwriting, and writing tools and message writing. It references research that indicates children are 11 times more likely to name a letter if it was in their own name, which guides teachers as to which letters to begin their writing instruction. And you can find that on pages 142 and 145 of the letters um, early childhood manual. I always love all that information on name writing. It's just so important for um, children in preschool and kindergarten. So as we're moving towards the end of our time today, we want to briefly touch on handwriting and letter formation, because this is kind of where it all starts when we're actually thinking about putting pencil to paper. So physical development and fine motor skills are an essential component of writing. After all, you cannot write if you cannot actually hold the pencil or the pen or the marker. Um, so when we think about what the typically developing preschool age child should be able to do physically with fine motor skills, we find that the pincer grasp develops at the end of the first year. 
and then it continues to be refined throughout the early years so that during the first grade year, by the time they get to first grade, the quality of handwriting is going to develop quickly. It's going to plateau um, by second grade, and then it's going to become more structured and automated in third grade. So Overveld and Holston found that handwriting difficulties are one of the most prevalent causes for school aged children to be referred for occupational therapy. And research also demonstrates that the inability to master handwriting can affect proficiency in spelling and composition skills, which I find fascinating. So teachers will want to facilitate fine motor growth and strength, as previously discussed, along with the development of pencil grip and letter formation. And just to kind of highlight here, the recommended type of writing tool for young children is thin and short. So broken crayons, not the fat ones, but the little um, thin ones, if they're broken, or even those golf course pencils are a great size for little hands to facilitate better grip. So when we're talking about handwriting versus um, letter formation, these two are not interchangeable terms, even though they may often be thought of as such. Handwriting is that overall umbrella, and that includes spacing, letter size, uh, use of indentation, as well as letter formation. So letter formation is a piece of handwriting. And as we do know from Letters for Early Childhood Educators, um, our Amanda with second edition, children do learn to print letters by first imitating geometric shapes. And then from a developmental perspective, they learn to draw links and circles in isolation, or excuse me, in isolation. Intersections, those come a little bit later. And in general, uppercase letters have more straight lines and fewer intersected curves than lowercase letters. So table 4.2 in the Early Childhood Manual, that's page 136, it provides a really nice visual and a timeline for how the strokes of writing develop. And it also tells us that the visual shape of some letters may make it easier or harder to learn to discriminate between letters. Um, and that subsequently means that it may be more challenging to form and write those letters. So it's important that we as teachers highlight the distinctions between letter formations and strokes during instruction and application if needed. What we don't want children to do is invent letter formation because this can um, develop habits that are gonna interfere with correct strokes. So for example, if children are not taught and guided to make straight lines from the top to the bottom, many of them are gonna naturally start at the bottom and push up. So as a friendly reminder, we want it to be explicitly modeled to use top to bottom and left to right strokes when forming letters, as well as grouping letters with similar shapes when we're planning our instruction. That way building good habits in letter formation will impact later writing skills. With there are some activities that teachers can use to support the development of letter formation that do not require paper and pencil. Uh, things like paintbrushes and water on the sidewalk. We know the air writing, um, tracing sandpaper letters with our fingers, um, and then just making stripes like what you see here on this slide. Those are all just a few activities that can help build um, letter formation. So. The bridge to kindergarten, um, during that preschool year, much of the instructional focus is on building foundational skills for later success and achievement. And the four-year-old preschool year often provides the first formalized educational experience for many children that are in attendance. Intentional facilitation, support, and instruction during this time is what's going to allow children to capitalize on the learning opportunities that they're provided. So what begins in preschool is directly aligned to kindergarten standards and outcomes. So when we're thinking about literacy and writing skills, letter formation should be systematically taught beginning in kindergarten, and this supports handwriting fluency. Preschool is all about exposure and developing interest, so we do not want to model. We do want to model and support when interest is demonstrated and when authentic connections can be made. But we should not require children to engage in formalized letter writing and formation activities. So think about when these things naturally occur, maybe during your choice time and center time. When students automatize um, correct letter formation early in their writing development, their spelling is going to improve and their writing compositions are gonna be longer and of higher quality. So when children have that early exposure to literacy skills, we know that it directly supports their ability to process and internalize skills that are often abstract in nature and take some time to solidify. 
that early exposure to literacy through appropriate context is helpful, not hurtful. The act of children physically using their hands to encode also improves memory for letters and words and facilitates that faster word recognition. This is a great connection to the physical skill and strength, helping us see how all those domains um, interact. And then finally, they are writing legibly and fluently by hand is a practical skill of communication that is required in everyday life. Um, and we often talk about how high school graduates have to be prepared for 21st century life and work. You all mentioned this a little bit in um, your comments in the chat. So this last one demonstrates a great connection back to our rationale. We do have literacy instruction standard. There's a dedicated section of the pre-K LIS specific to writing, and it includes some high quality practices that will best support um, the progression of writing skills in the preschool classroom. Um, the information in today's session, um, it comes directly from unit four in the early childhood manual on print knowledge, and it is specifically aligned to session 10. So if you haven't gotten there yet, that is perfectly okay. You had a wonderful introductory um, piece of information and some front loading happened today with this session. Um, we also want to remind you that this PLC guide that is available is a kind of a package deal um, and it includes the facilitator portion so you can pull this information and use these with the teachers you support or with other teachers, all of those nice pieces. So again, today was all about writing. We do record these sessions, so they're always available for folks to go back and watch. Um, and then you can see here, our next session is going to be in May, and it's going to cover observation and assessment. And we'll see if we can squeeze some small group information in there for you as well um, in May. So finally here, we have a couple of resources that are available. We strongly encourage you to head over to the OEL website um, and check out all of these great resources. There's preschool resources, kindergarten resources, lots of nice things there. Um, and so Jenny and I would like to sincerely thank you for joining us today. And we do look forward to seeing you at the next webinar um, in May on the 16th and the 17th. And that one will be um, on observation and assessment.